let's bake. So Lucky has been craving chocolate chip cookies, so he's gonna do that. He makes the best chocolate chip cookies. And I'm gonna do another loaf of banana bread. Okay, I'm gonna smash my bananas first. You said. Okay, so we smash the bananas. Then we're gonna add melted butter, sugar, but I use monk fruit sweetener, eggs, and vanilla. Baking soda, sprinkle some cinnamon. Okay, Baking is like kind of therapeutic a little bit. Banana bread dough is done. I'm gonna add some chocolate chips. Lucky's combining sugar, what else? That has sugar, butter, and eggs in it. Cute. I made a mistake. What'd you do? I only used two bananas and I should have used three to four. It's yeah. gonna be fun, right? Okay. okay, so we added the eggs, now we gotta mix this shit up. Baking soda, baking powder, salt, baking soda. and vanilla. We've got our banana bread, so I'm gonna put this in the oven at 350 for about 45 to 50 minutes, and then I'm gonna. <laughs> it's okay. Then I'm gonna check on it and see whether it can oh get pulled. A little bit at a time. Do two and a half cups of that. Maybe a little speck. Yeah. Is this so fresh? Mm -hmm. Let it rest. Okay, need a chocolate chip. Mm. Oh yeah. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Let's make a lentil soup stew. I don't even know what to call it. Growing up, my mom used to make so many lentil dishes, whether it was curries or stews or soups. It was always so good. So today I was missing her, so I decided to dedicate this dish to her. Diced up some onions, sliced up some garlic. Carrots are a must in any soup I make. I found this Japanese sweet potato laying around, so I decided to throw that in and hope that it goes well, and it did. It was so amazing, and so it added a sweetness to the soup. Put some tomato paste in, beef, bone, and the normal broth. Then I added some razzle-dazzle, threw in my potatoes as well. While that was all cooking, I put, I sliced up some spinach and then put some spices in. I think I did turmeric, cumin, and um, what was it? Paprika. Then I added my spinach and there we are. It might be hot still. Is that good? Mm.
Here's what my toddlers and I eat in a day. I'm not a huge breakfast person, so I rarely have it, but I made them some lemon chia seed pancakes. These are really easy and quick to make, and they're really yummy as well. So I made that, and then I gave them some peaches and maple syrup with that. While they ate that, I had a huge glass of lemon water. And then it was time to go to the grocery store. While we were in there, they begged me to get them olives and apple chips. So <laughs> that's what I did. And they had that on the way home. Once we got home, I made them a little snack plate because it was nap time. So it was frozen peas, some hummus and crackers, papaya. Don't ask me about the frozen peas. They just love them. <laughs> and then they woke up from their nap and we had a little rice noodle stir fry situation with some turkey. And I made quick pickled cucumbers with that. We snacked on some fruit and then dinner time rolled around. I made some pasta with veggie sauce. I just found every green vegetable I had and turned it into a sauce with some avocado and pickled onions. I don't have gluten, so I made myself a little lettuce wrap burger with avocado, chimichurri, pickled onions. These were so easy to make, but so good. And then once the babies went to bed, I had a hot cup of tea and a cassava flour waffle with some blueberry jam. My toddler stumbled into my room this morning and her first words were mama, jam, and bread. So that's exactly what I did. Growing up, fresh bread and jam was one of my favorite things to eat. So I get, I get it. I started off making some super simple bread and let that rise for two to three hours while I started on my vanilla peach jam. I went to the grocery store a couple days ago and I saw that peaches were in season, so I bought six pounds. What do you do with six pounds of peaches? You make jam. So I did exactly that. I gave them a rough chop, added them to the pot, and put some honey, sugar, lemon, and vanilla with it. I let it go for about 20 to 25 minutes and then I blended it all up. I don't like chunky jam, so that's just a preference thing. Yes, I spilt a lot of it, but it was no big deal. After that, my bread was done rising, so I floured parchment paper and put it on top. I just folded it in, in itself and put it in my Dutch oven. Well, my pot that doubled as a Dutch oven. And it came out perfectly crispy, but soft on the inside. At this point, everyone was getting really excited, so I buttered up the bread, added my vanilla peach jam, and they requested some strawberries on top. It was delicious. These are the best pitas you'll ever have in your life. My husband never has specific food cravings, but today he wanted pitas and Mediterranean food, and he requested to go out to dinner, but I told him that I'm just gonna make it from scratch, and they turned out insane. I started off with my pita dough, and needed that for about 10 minutes. Yes, it definitely was an arm workout, but it was totally worth it. And I put that in a bowl, covered it, let it sit until it doubled in size. Then I divided the dough and formed them into little balls, let those sit for another 10 minutes, and then started rolling them out. I greased up a pan and put my dough in, flipped it over, and let it go until it puffed up. That's how I knew they were done. They were so good. I decided to pair it with a little cucumber tomato parsley salad, so I chopped up all those ingredients really fine, added some olive oil, lemon, salt, and pepper, and I marinated some chicken in my turmeric yogurt marinade that I had going while I was making this salad. I also decided to make some homemade hummus with olive oil paprika. It was like a roasted garlic type hummus. Sliced up the chicken and we were good to go. This meal was insane. I was scrolling through my camera roll and came across this pavlova my sister and brother-in-law made and I started craving it so I had to try to make it. Was this perfect? Definitely not. But for my first attempt at making this, I think it was pretty solid. I think where I went wrong was my egg whites weren't room temperature, so they didn't form those perfect stiff peaks. But nevertheless, it still turned out so, so good. I added egg whites, sugar, whipped those up, then folded in some cornstarch and white vinegar. I put them on some parchment paper and dented the middle so that the rims were higher. Then I put them in the oven for 30 minutes, turned my oven off, left them in for another 30 minutes while I cut up all my fruit and made this coconut whipped cream. It was just coconut cream, a little bit of powdered sugar, and some vanilla. 
this tasted like ice cream it was so good then i layered on my fruit and if you have passion fruit laying around trust me it is a game changer on these so i popped some of that on and these were insane everyone in the house loved them and they tasted like marshmallows the perfect treat the other day i was in barnes and noble and i walked past the cookbook section this one persian cookbook was staring straight at me so i had to open it up and i found this golden raisin meatball recipe and this was absolutely delicious. I added some ground beef, ground lamb, chickpea flour, some spices, carrots, and onions. Gave that a really good mix and formed them into little ovals. After I was done with that, I put them in the fridge to rest. While I got started on my sauce, I cut up some red onion, that was all I had, and sauteed that in some olive oil. Added some turmeric and dried mint to it, a lot of dried mint. Gave that a good little mix and added some vinegar, lemon juice, and water. Let that come to simmer and just let it go while I was frying the meatballs. Made sure to get a good char on those and pop them in the sauce after to simmer for about 45 to 50 minutes. I also added some golden raisins and these were so good. My absolute favorite waffles, they're dairy-free, gluten-free, and also AIP compliant if you are following that diet. I added some cassava flour, collagen, baking powder, and coconut milk. Oh, also apple cider vinegar and maple syrup into a bowl and gave that a good mix. You kind of want your dough to be a little bit more runny. Then I popped that in my waffle maker and had these insane waffles. I usually put some blueberry compote on top. That's just my favorite way to eat them, but you can eat them however you like. I had a very specific salad craving, but I also wanted something warm, so I decided to make a baked salad. I chopped up some asparagus, ribbon, some carrots, and then I started seasoning all of my ingredients. So for the kale, I just did olive oil, pepper, and salt. And then for the chickpeas, I did some cumin, paprika, cayenne, and coriander. And then for the carrots, I did harissa, mint, salt, and some maple syrup. I love when carrots are a little sweet. And then asparagus, I kept super simple with salt, pepper, and some dried chives. Then I put the chickpeas and asparagus on the baking sheet because they would take the longest and made my dressing in the meantime time with some olive oil, lemon, garlic powder, pepper, salt, and some Dijon and cilantro. Put the lid, oh I also added ginger, put the lid on and gave it a really good shake. Then I pulled up my veg and added my kale and carrots to it and put it in the oven for another 10-ish minutes. I would just keep an eye on it so that it doesn't go too crispy. Then I mandolined some onions, chilies, and cut up some prosciutto. I love fried prosciutto. If you haven't tried it, give it a go. And then I added a generous amount of olive oil to the pan and fried my chilies and shallots in it until they were golden and kind of crispy. By that time, it was time to assemble the salad, so I put the kale carrots, asparagus, chickpeas in the bowl and finished it off with the prosciutto and fried shallots and chili. This was so, so incredibly good. The dressing was a perfect match to all the other vegetables and I highly recommend this if you haven't had a baked salad before. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Last year, I visited Japan and fell in love with so many of their dishes, so today we're making yaki udon. I chop up every vegetable in the fridge that's gonna go bad soon, so today it was onion, carrot, bok choy, bean sprouts, and some mushrooms. Then I added some steak, but you guys can leave it vegetarian or add a different protein if you want. Then after that, I make my sauce, which is dark soy, soy, some sesame oil, mirin, a splash of rice vinegar, and some brown sugar and oyster sauce. Then I get my wok really, really hot and 
throw in my steak. I let that fry for about 30 seconds before adding in my onions and mushrooms. I also add a tablespoon of that sauce and just let it fry for a second. Then I add all my other vegetables in while I boil my udon. They don't take long, about a minute, so keep an eye on it so that they don't get too overcooked. I add those to the pan with the rest of my sauce and while that fries for another two-ish minutes, I chop up my green onions and add those. This meal comes together in less than 20 minutes and it is so good and so comforting. Soup season is right around the corner so I've been trying to make as many salads as I possibly can and I made this sweet potato noodle salad with a miso lemon dressing. I started by shredding off some purple cabbage and slicing some cucumber and carrot. Then I sliced up two green onions and moved on to my purple kale. I took the stems off, gave it a good wash, and then chopped it really small. I then make my dressing. I put in miso, lemon, a good amount of sesame oil. Don't be afraid of that. I added some coconut aminos, but you can also do soy sauce, rice vinegar, ginger, sea salt, and then a sweetener of choice. I did some maple syrup, closed the jar, gave it a really good shake. Make sure that you get it really, really mixed because the miso can get clumpy. I had some chicken that I just shredded up and then I cooked my sweet potato noodles. These can be quite long, so I usually chop them with my scissor. And it was time to plate. I did a bed of kale, put the noodles on top, then I added my cabbage, cucumber, carrot, and I also found some edamame in my fridge that I thought would go good with it. So I put that on top and then I added a lot of cilantro. I know it's a hot topic, so do as you please. And then my dressing on top. This was so easy to make and so, so, so good. Mango sticky rice is all I can think about. And after ordering it and getting the tiniest portion, I just decided to make it myself. We buy a lot of mangoes when they're in season. So I started off by making some mango ice cream. I diced up my mango, added them to a blender with some sweetener and lemon. Gave that a good blend, then combined some heavy cream, milk, and some sugar, added my mango puree, and let that chill in the fridge before transferring it over to my ice cream churner. I churned it for about 20 to 30 minutes until it reached a soft serve consistency, and then I popped that in the freezer while I got started on my sticky rice. I had the rice soaking the night before and added it to my steamer. I let that steam while I started on my coconut sauce that was going to go in with the rice, which was coconut milk and some sweet sweetener and a pinch of salt. Once my rice was finished steaming, I added my coconut milk to it, covered it, and just let it sit while I made thicker coconut sauce to go on top of the rice. I let that reduce on the stove while I finished up prepping all of my other things, which was slicing some mango. And by this time, my rice had soaked up all of that coconut milk, so it was time to plate. I put down my rice, added my mango, added some of that coconut cream on top with some sesame seeds, and then obviously had to pull out my mango ice cream. The cold ice cream went perfectly with the warm rice, and this was absolutely divine. Everyone loves French toast in my house, so when my toddlers requested it this morning, I decided to just make it for them. I started off by making my brioche bread by adding some yeast, flour, and milk to my bowl and letting that activate. Then I added in all of my eggs, some more flour, and kneaded that dough until it all came together. Once it started coming together and forming a dough, I cut up some butter and slowly dropped that in until it was all incorporated. Then I covered that and let that rise until it was doubled in size before portioning it off in three portions. I rolled those out until they were about 9 inches long. I pinched the top together and then braided it up and tucked the bottom under so it would create a seal. I placed my dough into my loaf pan and let that rise until it was about doubled in size. In the meantime, I prepped my mixed berry compote by combining some frozen berries with some maple syrup and lemon juice and letting that reduce on the stove. Once that came together, I transferred it over and let that cool in my bowl. I brushed my brioche with some egg wash and popped that in the oven for about 35 minutes before pulling it out. I let that cool while I made a quick whipped cream, because who doesn't love French toast with whipped cream on top? At this point, my bread was cool enough to slice, so I cut it into slices, making sure that they weren't too thin before I combined my egg with some heavy whipping cream, vanilla, and cinnamon to dip my bread in. 
I coated both sides and then placed my bread in a buttered up pan. I fried it until it was golden brown and then it was time to plate. I put my french toast down, topped it with the mixed berry compote, the whipped cream, and I also had some passion fruit lying around and the kids love it, so I put that on top and they absolutely loved it. Here's everything I eat in a day as someone that loves to cook but is also 37 weeks pregnant. I start off with some herbal tea and then take my prenatals. I hate the taste of water so I mixed in some apple juice today. I was also craving some fresh pressed orange juice so I made that and then got started on breakfast. Crepes are so much better than pancakes so today I made a rooibos tea crepe with some vanilla peach puree that I had in the fridge and topped it with some strawberries. These flavors together really hit the spot. I ended up making a banana date milkshake before moving on to making my lunch. You guys know I need to have my midday beverage, so today we did a blueberry vanilla iced tea. For lunch, I wanted something just light and refreshing and super simple, so I made a crispy rice salad. I chopped up a bunch of vegetables I had in the fridge, which was cucumber, carrots, some purple radishes, edamame, green onions, cilantro, and then I had some leftover rice as well that I crisped up in my pan before adding my sesame miso dressing and also some chilies. I gave that a good toss and then remembered that I also cut up some avocado. So I added that on top. I had some errands to run, so for dinner I made a slow roasted Mediterranean lamb. Popped that in my Dutch oven with some warming spices and let that go for about three hours. I wanted something sweet, so I cut up some mango, papaya, and I made a coconut mousse with some coconut sugar on top. When the lamb was close to being done, I made my flatbread dough and let that rest for about 30 minutes while I made my date gremolata. When my lamb was tender and falling apart, I shredded it up and returned it back to the pot to soak up all the juices while I fried up all of my flatbreads. This meal, you guys, was so good. So I put down my flatbread, some lamb on top, my date gremolata, I added some fresh parsley and some chili, also a sprinkle of sumac. Wow. And then I was craving some cereal. My husband's been on a real ice cream kick lately. We ran out of ice cream, so I decided to combine two of his favorite things, ice cream and cinnamon rolls, and make a cinnamon roll ice cream. I heated my milk mixture on the stove while I combined all of my egg yolks and gave that a good whisk before pouring in some of that hot milk. Then I transferred all of that back to the stove and let it thicken a little bit before adding it to a bowl with some heavy cream. Make sure to strain it just to get all the bits out. I added some vanilla and some more cinnamon before covering it with cling film and setting it in the fridge for a few hours. In the meantime, I made my cinnamon roll dough with some butter, some sugar, I used some whole wheat flour, a little bit of milk, and obviously some more cinnamon. I let that go until it all came together in a cohesive dough before transferring it over to a bowl. I placed this in the fridge until my mixture was cool. And right before churning my ice cream, I made a quick cinnamon swirl that I would drizzle on top of the ice cream. Once all of my ingredients were prepped, I turned on my ice cream churner and poured in my ice cream mixture. I let that go until it thickened up before adding my cinnamon roll dough and letting that go for another few minutes. Once it looked like soft serve, I transferred it over to my storage container. It needed a little bit more, so I drizzled it with my cinnamon swirl and some more of the dough that was left over. And then it was ready to go in the freezer for a few hours. By this time, both Lucky and I couldn't wait any longer, so we had it. And it was so good that he stole that bowl and I made myself another bowl. The different textures were so perfect. He actually ended up finishing that whole tray of ice cream, so I'm making a new batch.